Guys, I think I broke it. Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph, and in today's Grand Blue Fantasy Relink video, we've kind of got everything. Infinite XP, Mastery Points, Items, Sigils, Vouchers for Sigils, you name it. We can pretty much get as much of it as we want and we can do it all while AFK as well. So if that interests you, then stick around and I'll tell you exactly how you can do this yourself. Quick disclaimer, this is an AFK farming route that some may say you're cheating or ruining the game and it makes use of full assist mode. So it's a mode that's designed as an accessibility option, but it can be used to our advantage to cut down a significant portion of the grind required to tackle the later difficulties in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. But be aware that it only works from normal mode to extreme difficulty and it doesn't work for anything higher than that. So proud mode, maniac mode, ultimate difficulty, you can't use this for that. But the stuff that you can use this to get will help you massively when getting to those stages and even after you've reached them. So what is full assist and how does it work? So if you go into the options here, gameplay, assist mode you have off which obviously means you're playing it as normal assist mode which means you just have to match square and full assist mode which means the only thing you actually have to control at all is the character's movement so if you're using the control stick everything else is done for you so what this means is that the characters literally act like an ai companion and can be used in conjunction with your ai pet companions to take enemies out and complete missions up to the extreme difficulty quests without you actually having to do anything but because you can't move, you can only use this in arena fights or anywhere where the character is not required to move. So it's for this reason that our player character here is Rackham. And the reason for that is because Rackham can attack from anywhere on the map, essentially, from an arena perspective. His range is massive. His damage output is really high. You can stick him next to whoever you want, your highest damage dealers preferably, and kind of just go crazy from there. So which missions is it that you're required to do? So there's different missions you'll want to use this for, for different reasons. So if we go over to the quest counter here and undertake a quest, go to boss, and then if we scroll down to the extreme difficulty missions, you can make use of pretty much any of these. So you can farm and use this method to farm any materials you particularly need. But the stronger your characters are, the more likely they are to do these quickly and you're not going to get wiped, which is the only re real reason that you can really die or lose in this. I've done this method overnight, I've done this when I've gone out to town, and it's been fine throughout. But my characters are already quite strong. You need to be at a point where you can farm these effectively yourself. But if we take Galanza, for example, he's in an arena that's quite small. So as the mission starts, I am literally going to put the controller down. I'm not going to press any buttons whatsoever. And as you can see, because Galanza is within range of Rackham's attacks, the full assist mode kicks in and you can just go crazy and attack. He'll auto dodge anything that comes anywhere near him. And one of the reasons I've put Cagliostro within my party whilst doing this is so that I have a heal or a res just in case I need it. But realistically, you're not going to need this. And the stronger your characters are, the faster that this farm is going to go. After the quest finishes, you have a 30 second timer in order to pick up all of the chests after the boss fight is finished. But you don't actually have to do that. Like once the timer runs out, the chests all open and you get all the items anyway. And then when you go into the results screen, Another 30 second timer starts up and then you get your items results screen where you can press square and opt to repeat the quest. So once the timer runs out, you kind of go on an auto repeat. The only other thing that you really need to do is make sure you press the start button when the load screen comes up because normally you have to press X to go through that screen. But if you press start, it does auto play. So it automatically loads the next instance as soon as it's ready to go. Now this boss fight and the others within that same list of extreme fights don't actually get you a great deal of XP, but what it does get you is a great deal of items. So items like just materials that you can use for weapon forging, materials that you can use for weapon upgrade crafting, but more importantly, materials that you can trade in for knickknack vouchers. And these will be very, very important as you progress into the higher difficulties of the game. So we've now gotten infinite items, AFK farming, infinite money, because you get money, and you get some mastery points for also finishing the quest. But what you don't get an awful lot of is XP, and you don't really get mastery points quick enough to warrant doing that single quest over and over and over again. However, I'd like to turn your attention to this gentleman over here. 
So this guy is a quest giver, a side quest giver, that gives mastery points, fortitude crystals, which are the XP gains for weapons, some money, and some XP as well, in exchange for earth shards and fire shards. Now you can see here that I have a lot of earth shards and fire shards, because the earth shards come off of beating Galanza, and the fire shards come off of beating Vulcan, one of the other bosses in the main story. And this is a quest you can actually repeat. So once you've done the quest, cashed it in, got what you needed to, you might get some level ups for characters that aren't in your main party while you're at it. You would normally have to go out of the instance and then cut back in again. But if you go to Lyria's journal and then back out of it again, that counts as a separate instance and counts as a loading screen. So now that that's done, the quest is back up again. So you can just accept it again and then complete it again and repeat ad nauseum until you've got as much mastery points as you can possibly muster. But what about XP farming? So the main reason that people use this particular mission, Slime Peed, which is unlocked at Maniac difficulty, is that it does give you a lot of XP. And if you want XP quickly, I would still suggest using this mission at a manual pace. But if you want a mission that's gonna give you some XP like while AFK, you can absolutely do that. If you go to the Assault Formation, which is this mission here, you'll end up on the main deck of one of the ships that you're on and you have to fight loads of enemies. Well, the nice thing with this particular fight is that the enemies do you a favor and they walk towards you. So you don't actually have to move, which means you can AFK farm it. I did find with this mission though that there were a couple of times where they weren't coming towards me. Maybe there was a bug or maybe there was a reason that they weren't spawning. But I, it didn't matter because the mission finishes when the timer ends regardless of how many enemies you've beaten. So as long as you've beaten at least one, which you spawn next to some and it's fine, they'll keep coming at you and the next time it'll work properly. So you could just leave this on overnight and get some XP for whatever characters you want. In terms of what other missions are worth doing, honestly any of the extreme boss fights are going to be worth doing, possibly even the very hard ones because you'll have access to the materials that come from those bosses and you can use those to then go and craft other weapons. But the other main reason you want all of those items when it comes to like farming AFK a lot of the bosses is that knickknack vouchers are what you use to craft or gacha essentially the highest level sigils. And if you go to treasures and you scroll all the way down, you can find the items. So we'll use Alpha Wolves Valor and Galanza and Amnesis as an example here to exchange for those vouchers. So for every one of these Alpha Wolves Valors you get, you get 10 vouchers. So you put in here however many vouchers you want. I could put in 250 and I still wouldn't use up all of those items, and then you can use those in exchange to get the really busted sigils even after you've unlocked Proud Mode. So I think that covers everything that you could possibly want in terms of cutting out the grind with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. You can get pretty much infinite XP from the ship mission, you can get infinite items from any boss on extreme difficulty that you want, all of which you'll use as materials to both make your weapons and your sigils going forward. You get infinite money, you get infinite... Um, uh, mastery points because of the quest giver for the earth and fire crystals. The only thing I will say is that, like I said, this will get easier as you get stronger. If you try and do this the second you unlock extreme difficulty, it may not quite go so well for you and it might be a bit of a slow burn. And the way that power creep works in Grand Blue, like the next difficulty up, you ramp up in difficulty really hard. So it might be worth waiting until you've unlocked maniac mode before you start doing this. And if you're not at that point yet, that's fine. You can use full assist to make it easier for yourself to get to that point if you don't mind basically ruining the game to do it. But I didn't do that. I've only discovered this method sort of through a combination of my own experimentation, talking to friends, Reddit posts, Twitter threads. I've kind of put all the pieces together and basically just found methods to farm pretty much anything you want in this game. And it doesn't ruin the game entirely because the end game doesn't allow you to use assist mode. And you need to have skill in order to do the proud mode stuff. So just farm away. So that's everything for today's video. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video as well as any of the other Grand Blue Fantasy Relink videos. I've already posted some beginner tips and some recommendations on your first characters. If you've enjoyed this video or any of the others, then perhaps consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel for future Grand Blue videos as well as Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Tekken vs Rising, Persona, Yakuza, and God knows what else comes out for the rest of the year. Let me know if this method is working for you. If there are any questions that I can answer or you have any questions about this, 
either leave a comment below, find me on Discord or, or Twitch, they're all in the links in the description box below. And if you're not sure what to comment on the video, just type the word algorithm, because it helps me out as a content creator, and I really want to do more when it comes to GBR, and I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you're enjoying this a lot, then perhaps you'd like to consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description box below as well, where you can get all sorts of benefits, like title cards that I make just for you, and all sorts of other artistic benefits as well that I'm able to share with those people. Support me very graciously, and I'm ever so grateful for doing so. So thank you all very much again, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.